Good morning, and on behalf of Kenneth and myself, may I wish you all a very happy new year. Kenneth and I will both be participating in the service today, and on behalf of us both, can I extend a very warm welcome to our friends from both Craigie Simonton and Presswick South Parish Churches, and of course to any friends and visitors who may have joined us. Wherever you're watching or listening to this service, it's wonderful to have you worshipping with us, and we hope you enjoy your time of worship here with us. So let us begin our service by coming together to worship God and singing our first hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Over the years we have all heard the story of how the night Jesus was born an angel appeared to the shepherds and announced his birth. They headed off to Bethlehem which was a nearby town and a place that they knew well and knew how to get there. We also know the story of the wise men also called the Magi who at the time when Jesus was born saw a star in the sky and they believed announced the birth of a king. And they decided to travel to Jerusalem and began to ask people, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. Now King Herod heard about the Magi and their search for a king and he was deeply disturbed. He called a meeting of the priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? The priest told Herod that the prophet Micah had written that the Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem. So Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men and said to them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I too can go and worship him. Now, if we were planning a visit 
to another town or city and we didn't know the way, we might first ask someone who did know the way for some directions and they might give us some general directions and suggest the best roads we could take. Alternatively, we could use a book of road maps just like this one. The maps would show us exactly how to get to where we're going and as we travel we can keep checking the map to be sure we're headed in the right direction. If we follow the directions and that we receive and use the map to guide us, we will surely find our way to our destination. Of course, nowadays we could use either satellite navigation systems installed in most cars or we could use map apps on our phones, both of which would again help us to find the right direction and to show us where to go when we don't know the direction we want to travel in. However, as you know, the wise men did not have any maps or sat-navs or mobile phones to guide them to Bethlehem. But they had something even better. They had a star to guide them. So the wise men followed the information that the priests had given to Herod and the star that God had given to guide them and it led them right to Jesus. When they found him, they gave him their gifts, bowed down to him and worshipped him. You know, today wise men and women, boys and girls, are still searching for Jesus. There are people who want to help us, people like us, good Christian people. But there is no map to help us find Jesus. And unfortunately, there is no star to follow. But we do have the Bible. We can find the way to Jesus by reading our Bibles. The Bible is a map and a star that will lead us to Jesus and all of us should read it to make sure that we are all headed in the right direction. Jesus is we. And now let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. God of creation, at the beginning of another new year full of promise and hope, we remember that you breathed life into the void and the world was born of nothing. Living God, your voice whispered love and the word came to life and was everything. Today, gracious God, we praise you that darkness has given way to light that prophecy has made room for the truth, that the waiting is over and you are with us. We praise you that silence has been filled with good news, that fear has been overcome by joy, that death has been defeated by life. We praise you that old has moved over for the new, that the past has given way to the future and that you are in the midst of it and in the midst of us gathered here. Most of all, Lord God, we praise you that you have been faithful to us in our lack of faith. At those times when we have doubted your presence and failed to notice you, when we have blindly followed our own path and failed to see you, when we have condemned and criticized others, when we have not loved you as you have loved us, Lord God, forgive us. Heavenly Father, your grace never wanes with the new year's first moon. Your love never falters when the world hesitates. Your compassion never runs out as time slips through our hands. You keep your promise and we are a forgiven people once again. May we, loving God, Remember that our story has begun anew here and that you wait for us, ready to shape it 
and us. That we might share your goodness, share your kindness and work for your justice. That all everywhere might hear your promise and come to know your peace. And all these prayers we make in Jesus' name. And now we join together in our family prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we join together in our second hymn, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. Now I'll hand back to Kenneth at Craigie Simonton Parish Church for the remainder of their service. Over to you, Kenneth. Thanks to Tom for leading our first part of the service on this, the first Sunday of a brand new year. And can I, wherever you are, whether it's Presswick, Craigie, Simonton, or indeed further afield through the wonders of modern technology, wish you all a very happy and blessed 2022. 
And let's hope as this year starts and continues that a true sense of normality returns to life. But once again, I hope for you and your family, you have a very blessed new year. Let me come to the first reading of a brand new year. And we are heading to the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 2 and verses 1 to 12. And this is the arrival of the Magi at Bethlehem. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd, my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them that exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went in their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed, and coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Amen, and thanks be to God for this reading from his holy word. Well, as we move away from the festive season and we prepare to put our Christmas decorations away for another year, I hope that despite the presence of COVID-19, you have all had a joyful time where peace, hope and love have featured strongly. Now, different people obviously have different thoughts at this time of year. Some, for example, as we move away from Christmas and New Year, in all fairness, are glad to get back to a sense of the daily routines that they once went through. While there are others who, in the words of that familiar pop song from the 1970s, wish it could be Christmas every day. Take the two young children, Emily, aged eight, and Ross, aged six. They had looked forward to Christmas for weeks, and when it arrived, they had a wonderful Christmas at home with their parents. And in addition, they had been fortunate enough to be given a wide array of great presents, including some new toys. As the days immediately following Christmas began to pass away, Emily and Ross were playing together, reflecting on what a fantastic Christmas they had enjoyed. Emily was indeed heard saying to her younger brother Ross, I sure hope Mary and Joseph have another child. Well, according to the Bible, we do believe that Mary and Joseph had more children, but in a sense, there was only one Jesus. Indeed, I would suspect that Emily's hope that Mary and Joseph had another baby had no real religious connotations, but was more to do with receiving more presents and perhaps eating more sweets than normal. Perhaps then, if Christmas could be extended, and it didn't all have to just focus on one day, namely the 25th of December, then we could grant Emily's wish. 
For I suppose when you think about it, that very first Christmas didn't just revolve around one day. For the enormity and the glory of the birth of Christ actually kept going for quite a while. For in our portrayal of the nativity, as we are all aware, we have shepherds and wise men descending on the stable to pay homage to the new child. But as most of us are aware, the wise men didn't arrive shortly after the shepherds. Indeed, if the truth be told, it was more likely that they arrived about a year later. For our reading from Matthew's Gospel gives us certain clues regarding their arrival and to the fact that it wasn't actually a stable as it's so often portrayed in Christmas nativities. Indeed, we are told they didn't arrive to pay homage to Jesus in a stable, but a house. And secondly, if we continue reading Matthew's Gospel, then when Herod resolved to kill his newborn rival, he ordered that all boys aged two and under be put to the sword. Which shows that a considerable amount of time had elapsed from when the wise men had first commenced their journey until they eventually arrived at their destination. A journey which had included a small detour to Jerusalem and an encounter with Herod. And therefore, the journey of the wise men wasn't without its challenges. There may also have been a sense of frustration that it was taking much longer than anticipated, matched only by their eventual joy and relief when they finally reached their destination. Late, perhaps, but as they say, better late than never. Well, you know, today we can perhaps learn quite a wee bit from the journey of the wise men, from their perseverance and patience. For let's face it, we live in a world today where more often than not, if we ask for anything or if we want anything, then it should be without delay. And if we don't get what we want, then our lack of patience can have serious repercussions. But perhaps the story of the arrival of Christ on the part of the wise men, perhaps the part that the wise men played in eventually bringing gifts is a reminder that at the start of a new year, that faith is not a one-day wonder, that faith isn't about making demands and expecting them to be carried out. Faith is surely about a journey through life that requires endurance, patience and commitment. But let's face it, like the wise men, we can sometimes lose our way. We can sometimes be distracted We can sometimes feel dispirited that we will never fulfill the tasks that are before us. And we can even fear failure, that our faith may be overcome with doubt and disappointment. Well, those wise men potentially must have experienced many of those emotions that threatened the success of their pilgrimage to pay homage to the Son of God. And yet, thankfully, they kept going acknowledging that faith is not a one-day wonder, but that faith is about the continual calling and influence of God on people like you and I, to continually follow his ways, supplemented by the gift of Christ and the knowledge that Jesus is always ready to welcome us, eager to receive those who truly seek him. And yes, while as alluded to, We can get distracted, we can lose our way, we can feel disheartened. We must never give up. Instead, whatever we face in this new year and beyond, may we always strive to keep going, to hold on to our faith and the knowledge that like the wise men, we too will eventually reach our destination. Amen, and thanks be to God for this meditation of his holy word. Let us pray. Lord God, we give thanks that Jesus came to our world, 
bringing a plea that people could live together in peace and love. In addition, Jesus came with the gift of eternal life. And therefore, in our prayer this day, as we reflect in our recent celebration, we ask at the beginning of a new year that we may continue our journey through life with a true sense of hope and faith, acknowledging that Jesus is our destination. Remembering also the lengthy journey of the wise men, fraught at times with distraction, frustration, and perhaps even uncertainty. Yet, Lord God, the wise men believed that it was never too late to find Jesus. O oh Lord, may their wisdom, their perseverance, and their faith be an inspiration to us all. And as we look towards a new year, May the road ahead be full of hope and faith, especially as we acknowledge that during the past few years, the personal trials and tribulations that we can sometimes face have been accompanied by the continuation of a pandemic that has caused restrictions, suffering and even loss. O oh Lord, as we enter this new year, we pray that we may look to the immediate future with the hope that a sense of normality will return to life in general. In the meantime, we pray for leaders and governments who continually monitor the situation and who seek to offer guidance and reassurance. May they fulfil their responsibilities with wisdom, trust and understanding. And we also pray for all those involved in administering care and compassion for all employed by the NHS, not forgetting those from other organisations who have assisted in the rollout of vaccinations. And let us not forget those who seek to ensure that daily life continues with a sense of routine. Pharmacists, shopkeepers, delivery drivers, care workers and all who provide a service to others. And in our prayer this day, we also think of those who are faced with additional concerns and challenges that threaten the normality of life. O oh Lord, in a time of silence, hear us as we pray. O oh Lord, whatever the needs, the fears, or even the sorrows faced by people, may the reality that the world has a Saviour be a continued source of hope and strength. For Jesus has promised he will always be there for us, and in his name we offer this our prayer. Amen. And now we come to a third and final hymn, What Else Could We Have?, but as with gladness, men of old.
final hymn, as with gladness, men of old. Well, can I just take this opportunity for thank and thank you once again for joining me and also Tom down at Presswick South. It's been a joy to have your company on the first Sunday of a new year. And from next week, the 9th of January, the services will once again be live streamed and both churches will be open once again at their normal times for our services of worship. But until then, can I just wish you all a very happy and indeed blessed 2022. And now let me close with a short blessing. And now, Heavenly Father, as a new year dawns, may you go forth with us as we make each step in the days ahead. And we now simply ask that your blessing, the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit will be with us this new year and indeed dwell in our hearts forevermore. Amen. Amen.